Howdy folks, I'm Likeable Lynx, learning to love lettuce leaves. I'm Amber. And that is an absolute lie, because we all know that lynxes are cats, and cats are obligate carnivores, and they're not learning to love the lettuce leaves, Amber. They could love them too. I mean, a lot of animals are kind of omnivorous. They still eat, I mean, cats, They you put them in the yard, and what do they do? They start chewing on the grass. Lies, it's all lies. Let's get started before the liar says more lying things. <laughs> Maybe I should have made you a lying lynx. Oh, and folks, there is a live stream later today, so please feel free to join us. We're looking forward to seeing you there. I know I kept forgetting to make this announcement, but uh, here's the announcement. <laughs> All right, folks, and our first letter is titled, Am I the Jerk for Canceling My Order at This Coffee Shop? I was at this coffee shop, and the cashier was really pretty. She had a cool anime tattoo also. I was going to get some coffee and a donut, and I said, Hey, I like your tattoo. What's your favorite character from that anime? She kept a straight face and just said, How can I help you? I then said, I really like anime too, and I just wanted to see what shows and characters you liked. She still showed no emotion and was like, Sir, do you want anything? I just said, actually, I did, but you made me change my mind. Bye. And I walked away. I didn't want coffee anymore after that. I was trying to be nice and to get to know her, and she was acting like that. All right, folks, what do you think? Jerk or not the jerk? Yes, you're the jerk. She is there to do a job. She is not, like, obligated to engage in small talk with you. Sounds like you wanted to hit on her, and she was just not there for that. She just wanted to do her do job. Yeah, I mean, I, I can understand her being cold like this and i think that it's her prerogative and that she was there to do her job and op was kind of trying to pry into her personal life i think maybe she could have said it a little nicer as in sir i'm not here to answer questions about my tattoos can you please just order or something like that but i mean i don't really think that she did anything wrong in this situation i imagine maybe this isn't the first time she's had prying questions like this so, honestly, at the end of the day, it's up to her whether or not she's comfortable answering these questions. And maybe she could have phrased things nicer. But, honestly, if you didn't get the hint, I mean, I don't know what to tell you at that point in time. It was it was maybe not the uh, most blatant way of saying, please don't ask me questions. But it was still pretty apparent. Well, and, you know, service workers have to go through all kinds of nonsense. Like, who knows what kind of a day she's had. And mm -hmm. for him to expect her to just, like suddenly answer his questions because she's stuck by the counter behind the counter and has no choice but to engage with him mm -hmm. it's just kind of a very entitled position yeah it is but let me know what you folks think so anyhow take care and good luck and bad clyde says you're the jerk working retail and food service is already a miserable experience almost nobody working those jobs wants to interact with you beyond performing whatever job functions they need to order your coffee and keep walking and review okay 929 says you're the jerk she made it clear that she didn't want to get to know you she's not obligated to do that whether she's at work or not and okie dokie 654 says you're the jerk she's not there so that you can get to know her she's there to sell you coffee it would have been okay to say cool tattoo i like that anime but then you give her your order instead of trying to force her into a conversation at its ad i just saw the judgment bot she showed disinterest in you because she was not interested in you and she is not required to pretend otherwise i mean i think that one is actually a really good comment all right folks and our next letter is titled am i a jerk for breaking up with my boyfriend because he tried to sell my piano behind my back so I'm a 26-year-old female, and I had been dating my now ex-boyfriend Daniel, a 27-year-old male, for three years. We moved in together last year, and we moved to the apartment that I own. My dad passed away when I was 15, and my mom passed away when I was 24. I'm an only child, and they had me in their 40s. I was a miracle baby, and had an amazing relationship with both of them. They didn't own much, but they did own a decent house with two bathrooms or bedrooms. I sold the house, and I bought an apartment with a capital and a car with the money. I've been working as a photographer for almost three years now. Anyways... I kept some of the belongings. One thing that is really important to me was the piano. It's an old classic piano that belonged to my grandmother, who was a great pianist, and then my mother became a great pianist too, and I started to take lessons when I was five years old. I even worked in some bars and some restaurants when I was a teenager to make some money. I don't play as much as I did then, but I still have the piano and I don't intend on ever selling it. I'm not the kind to have so much of a love for materialistic things, but this is simply the most important object that I own. 
Daniel has never shown much problems with the piano, none at all actually. However, he had been planning a trip to Europe, but we needed to save up more money. Daniel suggested that we should sell some things and I disagreed. Then he started to insist on just selling the piano. I explained why the piano was important for me and why I would never sell it. And he still insisted a lot. He just wouldn't let it go. The final straw was when I realized that he was trying to sell my piano online. I had had enough and I packed his things, I changed the locks, and I let the landlord know that Daniel was no longer welcome here. He had shown that he didn't give any cares about the things that are important to me and that he had little respect for me at my own apartment. No need to waste any more time with him. I also blocked him from everywhere and ignored his attempts to reach out. I'm now planning a trip to Europe, but with my two best friends. I suggested that we should go to a certain country and then take the train to the other ones. The problem starts with the other mutual friend. Most of them are my, on my side, and the others, even though they think that I was right to be mad, think that I should at least give him a chance to explain. They kept saying that he's very sorry and he wants to make amends, but I'm pretty sure that I don't want to get back together with him. Am I the jerk? All right, folks, what do you think? Is OP wrong for not wanting to get back together with a guy? <laughs> no, not the jerk. I mean, he has shown a fundamental disregard for OP. She explained to him how much this possession meant to her, even if she hadn't, like, even if it was not sentimental at all, he would have no right to sell her piano. But especially to take her dearest possession and try selling it behind her back so that he can go to Europe faster. Like, that is such a selfish and unloving thing to do. Yeah. I mean, OP gave an answer. OP said, no, we're not selling my piano. And he continued to badger her and try to walk all over her boundaries that she set here. And how is that going to look in the future for their other relationship decisions, right? Is he going to try to wear her down and eventually get his way? And I think that isn't the sign that this is going to be a good relationship. Right. I mean, he can go off and learn and grow, but he can do that with someone else. OP does not need someone who has so thoroughly disrespected her in yeah. her life. Yeah. But let me know what you folks think. So anyhow, take care and good luck. And Difficult Mood 3225 says... Why did you tell the landlord if you own the apartment? And OP replies, I own the apartment, not the building. So I, th I was kind of curious about that myself. But apparently the situation is that OP lives in a building and there are like other apartments inside of it. Yeah, so. it sounds kind of like a condo situation where you have a part of it, but not the whole thing. And Dookie14 says, not the jerk, you told him how much the piano meant to you why you didn't want to sell it and he couldn't drop it there he went behind your back to sell it online how can you trust someone who can't respect your property or your boundaries dude probably saw what he could get for it online and couldn't say no what is he going to possibly say as an explanation sorry i tried to sell the one thing of extreme sentimental value to you all right folks and our next letter is titled am i a jerk for ruining a family beach day so, to set the scene, me and my family are on vacation for spring break in Hawaii and my kids. An 8-year-old male, a 6-year-old female, and a 3-year-old female. We're about 3 or 4 yards in front of me, playing, in the sand, building a sandcastle, and whatnot. My husband is not with me at this time. He was at a shaved ice stand. So, I'm only one with my kids at this point. While I'm reading, I do my motherly look up and I see this couple. That look like they're probably in their 50s, talking to my kids. As I'm watching, they proceed to pull out their phones and start taking pictures with my kids. I instantly get up and I confront them to see what they are doing and they proceed to tell me that my kids are gorgeous and that they are doing a travel article or something like that and basically want to feature them. I have no idea if they thought that my kids were locals or something because they're half black and half Asian, but still I wasn't okay with having a complete stranger have pictures of my kids in their beachwear for an article and I politely asked them to delete them and that they had the audacity to tell me no. So we were arguing back and forth at this point and then my husband finally comes back from where he was and he's an introvert and he doesn't like public confrontation but they immediately delete the photos when he asked them to so he gets upset at me for causing a scene at the beach and ruining the beach day when i feel like what the couple did was weird but he is giving me the cold treatment because of it and i'm debating do i apologize to him about it so am i the jerk all right, folks, what do you think? Jerk or not the jerk? Not the jerk, and no need to apologize. This couple, what they were doing is not okay. 
First of all, a legitimate journalist, if they want to take photos with children in it, they will ask the parents for permission. That is a standard journalistic practice. Yeah. So, you know, secondly, like the even if they meant this entirely innocuously, you have no way of knowing it. There are all kinds of not good things they could do with photos of your children. You are right to be wary and to not want them to have that. Yeah, I mean, I think that that's the most important thing here. And we don't know what they wanted to do with these photos. You don't know if they were going to like continue to try to stalk and follow you. And I think, and you don't know what they were planning on doing with the kids while they were com interacting with them. And as an adult, you don't generally, adults generally don't interact with children without talking to the parents first, mm -hmm. right? Like there might be rare instances where that's not the case, but in general, you probably are going to be interacting with the parents long before you interact with their children, right? Well, exactly. Like, again, if they thought the kids were super cute, they could have gone up to OP and been like, hey, are these your kids? They're so cute. Can we take a picture with them? Yeah. But I, I think they're completely in the wrong. And I think the husband is in the wrong for saying that OP ruined the day, right? I know. It's like the creeps ruined the day if anyone ruined it. Mm -hmm. But, like, you should be more concerned that there are creeps taking pictures of your children. Yeah. But let me know what you folks think. So anyhow, take care and good luck. Owls and Cardinals says, Not the jerk, and your husband's response is not fair. Firstly, you didn't ruin anything. Secondly, he too should care about the kid's safety and privacy. And not acting like you're unreasonable for caring about this. Thirdly, it's annoying and messed up that it required him backing you up for them to actually delete the photos as requested. But it's not your fault that that was the case. I don't think that you should apologize. You did nothing wrong. I'm sorry that you're facing this backlash and hopefully he gets over it. And it's not a bigger sign of uglier and unhealthy dynamic between you. Folks, once again, we are here with our AI educational segment. Today, we're going to learn how to make a paper snowflake. Step one, grab a square of paper. Step two, melt your scissors. <laughs> Step three, snowflake. <laughs> Step six, snowflake. Step eight, snowflake. Step circle, snowflake. Step indistinguishable, snowflake. Step six, snowflake. And step seven, snowflake. That is how you make a snowflake according to AI. You know, that reminds me of a math t-shirt I have. It has like a drawing on the chalkboard. In the middle it says, and then a miracle occurs. It's like step three or something. And the per caption says, I think you should be a little bit more explicit in step three. Yeah. Well, I love how we also go from like a paper snowflake throughout this whole thing into a real snowflake yeah. at the last step. It's like it turned you magic. You like concentrated so hard on that snowflake until it turned into a real snowflake. Yeah. <laughs> and I love how they're like spreading their hands at the end. It's done. It's done. And there are now snows everywhere. All right, folks, it is tea time. Grab your beverages of choice. I've got some tea right here. And Amber, she has a joke. What did the pencil say to the drawing? The pencil said to the drawing, I'm going to dote on you or I, I created you. You are my spawn. You look good on paper. You look good on paper. That makes sense. And I have licorice spice. All right, folks, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for watching. Happy Fantastic Friday. I hope it's going fabulously for you. Folks, remember, we have a live stream today, so I hope that we see you there. Amber, we need some kind of moral advice and or guidance. And please have it in the form of how to treat service staff, service people. With respect and kindness, and don't try and force them into unnecessary conversations. I think that's good advice. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you all tomorrow. Bye!